Uh, welcome to SO36 uh, Berlin, where I have a band called Glory Hole Guillotine with me. First of all, tell me what and who are a band called Glory Hole Guillotine? Uh, well, uh, it's Ben Fagernus, the drummer, Carlos Deanda, the vocalist, Jeff on guitar, Jeff Kornfeld, and uh, Tyler William Affinito on bass. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, these guys started it. I'm sorry. These guys started it a while back. They were just using a drum machine, and then uh, obviously they wanted a real drummer for the tour, so called me up like four months ago, and now we're here. So. Uh, you are part of Hell on Earth tour that has been going around Europe almost for a month now. How has the tour been? Any crazy stories from the road? The tour has been great. Uh, all our tour mates have been super friendly and you know easy to get along with. Um, honestly, Cattle Decapitation has been like one of my favorite bands for a really long time now. Uh, so touring with them is kind of an unreal experience, but overall it's super great. We all get along on the bus. Um, as for crazy stories, it's just a lot of Travis pulling pranks or like just being weird. For example, um, he ganged up on uh, the tour manager Errol and just started rapping at him with like cheesy 90s sunglasses colors by like iced tea it was hilarious like three in the morning in the middle of nowhere on the, on the road so it's, it's not as crazy as people think <laughs> a lot of drunken evenings very drunken evenings uh basically the store uh the tour started off uh on the first so we get under this giant double decker bus we think oh yeah this is gonna be great it's gonna be a lot of fun it has been for the most part, but if you think about being on a bus with 20 other dudes, it just, uh, you know, after the first week, just starts to smell. It's just, it's been a lot of fun, but we have gotten really personal with each other, and uh, yeah, more than uh, I ever thought I would with any of these bands on this tour. Yeah, well, they're all super great. We, are, <laughs> we love them a lot, pretty much at this point. We're all bros. <laughs> Hideous dudes in particular have been like super nice, super hardworking dudes. Those guys are killer. Those are very professional band. Yeah, I said uh, you've been touring now almost for a month now over all over Europe. Uh, how important are live performances for your band? Uh, live performance is probably the most important thing for a band to do. Uh, that's basically your imagery, how professional you are able to perform these songs live. Whereas a studio, you get as limited time as you need in order to get the most sound you want, but uh, live performances are a right then, their moment. Uh, you gotta be not only playing right, but you gotta make sure your stage presence is all over the place. You gotta put in a lot of energy, because that energy feeds onto the crowd. Um, yeah, for me, a live performance is single-handedly one of the most important things that you could do being in a band. Um, as he said, because it's a right there, right then thing, you you only have right there, right then to entertain these people for however long you're up there. So doing almost anything on the stage as far as jumping around, going crazy. One night I rolled my foot on stage, actually, or rolled my ankle, um, which was very painful, but anything to uh, keep it going and keep it fun. Uh, the other thing with live performance is uh, being a musician is a job. And uh, for live performances, like let's say you're in an orchestra, if you make one mistake, chances are you're going to be fired right there. As far as athletes go, that type of thing, uh, it's you're able to make some mistakes over and over again. But uh, as far as musicianships go, you have to uh, make sure you can't mess up. And if you do, you have to you know pull it off, just keep on going. Yeah, and plus, you know, we're the first band, so they brought us on to get the crowd going. So we try to do that every night, you know, with our performance and our stage presence. Okay, the band has been together for over a year now. What made you guys put together a grindcore band in the beginning? Uh, we started off with a mutual love for the band Agoraphobic Nosebleed. Those guys are one of the craziest bands we have ever heard. Um, basically, they use a drum machine, so it's just 
as fast as possible. It's some points it's just noise, which we absolutely love. So with our mutual love of these bands like Napalm Death, Agoraphobic Nosebleed, Pig Destroyer, uh, we just kind of wanted to capture that feeling and uh, extreme imagery of just being like an insane fast band. Um, yeah, pretty, pretty much what he said. We just uh, basically we were, me and Jeff were sitting around one summer and just like you know what fuck it let's let's make a grind band we love we love grindcore so why not so we just we just started writing how um how we want to every song's felt very natural so far that we've written everything's felt very fun um yeah the tyler and jeff approached me just like one afternoon Joking around, you know, because we're all friends. Joking around, I was just like listing band names, just like oh, you know, Meth Mouth or whatever. And one of those was a Glory Hole Guillotine, and uh, they remembered it and they liked it, so they came back and said, "Hey, we want to use your name. Do you want to be in it, like doing the vocals?" And uh, personally, I do vocals like for fun. I wouldn't, was wasn't really like in bands a bunch. You know, but I was I thought it would be a good opportunity to like be into yeah, make it happen and like put together a band and like travel around and yeah. Um we played before we even played any shows I decided that program drums would probably not be as engaging live. Like we're not an agoraphobic nosebleed, like we're not at that level where we're just like, yeah. So I suggested like we find a drummer and that's when um jeff was going to, to school in minneapolis the mcnally you know college of music and that's how he had met ben so i mentioned it to jeff jeff said i know the correct guy like i know like, just the guy and uh they sent him the songs he learned them and yeah we just did a few one-offs and kind of like got used to playing together and you know, we were that's when we were like we became a band pretty much yeah uh crankcore is a bit of a niche genre what does it mean to you guys uh grind i'm probably actually honestly the least grindcore fan of the band i guess i do like grindcore uh but grindcore to me is um kind of like a more politicized death metal like death metal is all about uh just gore and horror shit and like a lot of fake or like made up things and grindcore is always to, always to me has felt more uh more real lyric wise um big destroyers prowler in the yard right, exactly. <laughs> uh, to me grindcore is the ultimate and the ultimate natural evolution and end of music i guess the most extreme end that you can get it can go whichever way you want it to go with any kind of instrumentals like the locust using keyboards or even naked city being primarily a jazz band that's influenced by grindcore um yeah using saxophone it's the ultimate creative freedom in terms of extremity and uh that's personally what i love about grindcore uh, to me, I want to say grindcore is probably the, in my opinion, one of the most extreme genres. Um, there are definitely a lot of people who are into metal, death metal, but they absolutely hate grindcore. Uh, we played a show uh, a few days before we actually went on tour, and it was mostly like black metal, death metal. And uh, we went on, we played these really quick 30-second songs. People don't know when they start, when they stop, and uh, as we were kind of walking out loading out we heard someone say man i hope there's no more grindcore i hate that genre to us it's not necessarily serious at all we can have some serious songs we can have some not serious songs it's all about the creativity and just extremeness like trying to pull the most extreme way possible in a 30 seconds okay uh, you guys come from uh, lake zurich illinois what interesting could you tell me about your hometown other than Paul's Park? 
Um, I've actually lived in Lake Zurich the least out of all of us. Like, I moved there. Yeah. So, yeah. Ben doesn't, ben doesn't even live in Lake Zurich. Uh, he lives in St. Paul. Minneapolis. Minneapolis. They're the same. Twin cities, right? <laughs> but, yeah, I uh, moved there when I was 17, and in high school is when I met them. So, I've been living there for a long time now, and I still don't know very much about Lake Zurich. I don't get out much. Lake Zurich is probably one of the most boring towns in Illinois, honestly. It's just a kind of a peaceful suburb. Nothing really goes wrong ever there. Um, it's just, we think it's kind of funny that this band, Glory Hole Guillotine, came out of the most like peaceful place. It was named like one of the top ten places to raise a family. So uh, we're kind of just coming from there hoping that uh no one takes us too seriously but at the same time we could be the most extreme people in lake zurich <laughs> lake zurich is probably the most middle of the road suburb you could ever get there's not much bad things that happen there and the only bad things that happen are like very very minor like oh no someone someone spray painted a dick on the side of this building once in, in several years and then there's I think like one of the biggest things that happened in Lake Zurich was it got mentioned in some movie I forgot what Gravity, Gravity. Gravity. it got mentioned in the movie Gravity and I think at one point they had the biggest fidget spinner in the world yeah yeah there was some article I saw at some point I was I live I live in Chicago now so like, I was so far removed from this, but there's the biggest fidget spinner in the world. And that's about... That really, that, that really perfectly sums up Lake Zurich. Like, if I lived in Lake Zurich, I would need a fidget spinner, for real. A, a giant fidget spinner. So, I think that's it. I think that's all we got about Lake Zurich. Okay, thank you very much, guys, and break a leg tonight. Thank you. Thank you.